Thanks for coming. I'm super excited. You know, this is like my jam, business planning and stuff like that. I'm happy to see we have a good crowd and hopefully we'll have some more joiners. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, this is our business planning kickoff Zoom. And really it's just to kind of lay the foundation and get you guys thinking about what you'll need for business planning. So um, I put this quote up, we'll start here. I love this quote from James Clear. Um, it's all about who you surround yourself by. And I think given where we are, it makes a lot of sense. As Ninja teaches us, your, your tribe affects your vibe. We have a good group here. So look around and see who else is joining. Maybe they can be your business planning buddy. So we will get going. Okay, sorry, I gotta click through. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys a video here to, to start. I love this. This is Kobe Bryant, who you guys know, he was a basketball player. He was, you know, 20 years with the Lakers, MVP repeatedly, five NBA championships, gold medals, all of the things. He tragically died in a helicopter crash in 2020, but um, they called him the Black Mamba because he used to give himself kind of like an alter ego on the court. And then it kind of evolved into this whole like Mamba mentality. And he was really kind of a super thoughtful guy. Um, so it was a very tragic loss when he died. But I'm going to show you guys this video from him. If you can't hear it loud enough, someone either put it in the chat or let me know. Okie doke. Thank you. Here we go. Best version of yourself. That's what the mentality means. It means every day you're trying to become better. It's a constant quest. It's an infinite quest. So starting at the age of two, when I first started playing the game and on and on and on, I always ask questions and I always try to get better every single day. At two, I could dribble a basketball. I could shoot a basketball on a nerf roof at the house. I would go to practice with my father. I would observe my father. I'd sit and watch games with him. I just constantly looked for things to learn from him. Very observant. I think the best way to prove your value is to work, is to learn, is to, so, to be a sponge. You always want to outwork your potential. As hard as you believe you can work, you can work harder than them. And that's what I tried to do when I first came in the league, but you know, basketball is such a direct competition sport. That competitive nature, the work ethic, and curiosity. Because I ask a lot of questions. I always sit down and just ask questions about certain games that I studied growing up. What actually happened there? What did you feel there? Why? And then, you know, that summer, I made a thousand shots a day. A thousand. And they weren't just shots. It were shots that you saw in that game. They were specific shots. I mean, it was coming out of the corner, going to the pinch post, put work in the post, coming off the screen. It was very specific. So when you download that into your system and you go out in court and you're just executing things that you've done thousands of times before and you have that dream, then that becomes possible. If I can work that hard every day, being blessed with the physical tools that I have, what would my career be? And I made a promise to myself on that day that I was going to work that hard every single day so that when I do retire, I have no regrets. And that was the most important thing for me is to leave no stone unturned, get better every single day. And if I live that way, then over time, you know, I'd have something that was beautiful. That was my philosophy. It seems like a pretty simple one, but you know, if you live your life to just get better every single day, you do that for 20 years, man, what do you have? I think the greatest fear you face is yourself because we all have dreams, and it's very scary sometimes to accept the dream that you have. It's scarier still to say, okay, I want that. It's scary because you're afraid that if you put your heart and soul into it and you fail, then how are you going to feel about yourself? Right? So being fearless means putting yourself out there and going for it. No matter what, go for it. Not for anybody else, but for yourself. Version of Sorry, I had to share that. I loved his message. I know we always have people who trickle in. So I was like, I'll show a video at the beginning and the tricklers miss it. because And it was a really good video, but I love his message, right? Like try to get a little bit better every day, be the best version of yourself for yourself, right? Words to live by for sure. Okay. So here is today's agenda. 
Um, we are going to do a business planning kickoff session now to get your wheels turning, get you thinking about your plan, get you in the right mindset. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk about why we should you do a business plan? How are we going to support you in creating that plan? Um, the challenge of capability and willingness. That's an interesting discussion. And then we're going to show you actually how you can go into bfsairconnect.com and pull your own transactions. Because looking back at your your current and past business is a really important part of business planning, kind of assessing where you are. And then we're going to go through these self-check quest self questions on the state of your business. So hopefully this will be helpful. I put it in the chat. If y'all have questions, speak up. I promise you someone else has the same question. So, okay. So we're going to start at the beginning. So, you know, what's a business plan and why do I need one, right? Um, a business plan is a written document that's going to outline your objectives, your strategies, and your financial projections for your work, right? It's the roadmap for your business, and it helps you make informed decisions about your goals. Um, I always say in guaranteed goals that it's so helpful to have a written plan for yourself that outlines what you should be doing, because as you get busy, like working on your business all day, you, you don't want to have to stop and figure out what you need to be do. If you've already taken the time and gotten off the hamster wheel to figure out what you need to be do, then it's just a function of checking to see what's on your list versus having to figure it out. And it's just execution. Um, so next year when you're busy, you'll be super, super grateful to yourself that you stopped now, got off the hamster wheel, were, were thoughtful and intentional about what you really want to be doing. Um, so I encourage you guys to do this. Um, having a business plan is less about, you know, predicting your future, but more about setting goals, tracking progress towards them, and then making changes as you're doing your business, depending on how things are going. I think that's super important. Um, okay, so why do you need a business plan? There's, you know, I did some research for data about real estate agents and business plans, and there was none, which I think is probably a testament to the state of our industry. But um, the only remotely relevant data that I could find was that 87% of realtors leave the business within five years of starting, which is pretty staggering considering kind of the cost to enter. Um, obviously, most of you guys are already past that point. And if you're not, the fact that you're here is a very good sign. Um, what I did the research I did find that says companies that have a plan grow 30% faster than those who don't. And um, generally speaking, companies that have a plan grow faster and are more successful. So obviously, if we know where we're going, we have a specific target, we're more likely to get there. Now, you guys are the best of the best, and we have a culture of success here. So all of you should have business plans. Otherwise, you're just kind of throwing spaghetti on the wall and hoping you get the business that you want, which is not a very good plan. Um, so I think we can all agree that the market is more challenging now than it was in the past few years. There's a few headwinds in our industry, right? The lawsuits, interest rates, what's happening in the world. You know, next year is an election year, which is historically always a little bit weird. So um, it's super intentional, super important that you guys are intentional about what you're gonna focus on and how you're going to create this success. Um, I was reading an Inman article about how to plan for 2024. And, you know, it was Inman, so I thought it was gonna be like super technical. And really it ended up, they, bas they basically said, um, no one can predict the future and all you can do is prepare. So that's why we're here. I'm super proud of you guys. There's almost 60 of us, so good job. Um, I love this quote. Um, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the ones most responsive to change. And so good for you for being here and. Um, thinking about your business and what you need to keep doing or what you need to do differently. Um, I'm, we're off to a good start. Okay, so here's where we're gonna start. You guys know we have some business planning opportunities scheduled for you and we already have like a workshop plan, but I wanted to do a Zoom poll because I'm super fancy now and I kind of know how to do Zoom polls. Maybe I don't, we'll see. Um, but I wanted to get y'all's feedback on what's important to you. Like we have a plan. Um, we fought really hard. The managers have been awesome. We've sat down and um, thought about like, what have you guys been receptive to in the past? What does work? How did we guys, get you guys to show up? And, you know, we concluded that like an in-person, hands-on, all hands on deck, meaning me, your manager, your marketing coordinator, be there, you know, workshop where you leave with something that's like you've written in, that's at least a start, right, is the way to go. So that's how we're going to do it. 
So we have a plan, but we also still wanted to get your feedback about what we should focus on or if there's anything that you guys feel is important that we're going to kind of add in. So the managers and I set a goal. I kind of set it and I told them and they were like, thumbs up. Um, it's our it's our goal that 100 of you guys will do a business plan and come to our business planning workshop. That does not seem like a lot since we have almost 400 agents. Um, and honestly, I hope we get to like middle of November, we've done all the sessions and we blew ourselves out of the water and it was way more than 100, but I'm shooting for 100. And the fact that there's 60 of you on this call is promising. Hopefully it's promising enough that you guys will actually come to the class. So I'm gonna do the poll now. I'm gonna put it out there. Okay. All right, we're gonna keep moving because I don't wanna make keep you guys here forever. Um, I'm gonna switch to the next slide and see what happens to the poll. Good. Okay. Can you guys see the screen even if the poll is up? I bragged about being fancy, but clearly I don't know how this works. So shame on me. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, so maybe John leave the poll up for like another minute and let them um, finish up. Will do. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, so here's a slide just showing you guys what business planning opportunities we have. I realize this is a little bit confusing. So um, Sotheby's International Realty, the global learning leaders, Sandesh Bil Bilgi and Rebecca Mason and Sandra Kerr, they are have put together a session that they're doing it online and they're gonna host a private version just for us this Wednesday from two to 3.30, it's a Zoom. You'll get an email before with the link and it's also in the training calendar. If you wanna attend that, um, it's different than what the managers and I are doing, but we thought we'd give you guys some options. If you wanna go to both and mix and match and figure out what works best for you, great. If you just wanna go to one or the other, like that's great too. Um, the managers definitely want to check in with you about your business plan and hope you have one. So um, just keep track of that, of where you want to be when. The um, What we're doing with our workshops is there's going to be one in person in every office starting next Monday in Fort Worth. And um, we did get it CE approved. So if you show up, you can have two hours of work of CE elective credit. Just knock that out and Give, do your business plan, which is, I think, hopefully super helpful. Um, so there's your opportunities. Does anyone have questions about that? There's a Sotheby's opportunity, and then there's a Briggs Freeman opportunity, which is happening four different times. So if you can't come to the one in your office, go to a different office. It's a good opportunity to network. Good? Okie doke. Okay. So this is a video, it's quick. Russ actually sent it to me not too long ago and I just loved it. So it's a video, this is a coach from the Hampton Road Youth Foundation, which is a like a community organization in Virginia focused on empowering the youth. And I think that the message is super, super key. So let me play it for you guys. It's not what you're capable of, it's what you're willing to do. Everybody hear me? It's not what you're capable of, is what you're willing to do. I know plenty of people that are capable. I know fewer people that are willing. You know what I mean? Will is a powerful thing. Ask yourself, what are you willing to do? Hear me. It's not what you... Okay. I love that video, especially because you can hear the little kids in the background being like, yeah, which I think is so cute. It's, it's good for all of us. Um. Okay. So on that note, I'm going to show you... Uh, it, it, this piggybacks kind of nicely onto this. So um, you guys know I love a good matrix or a good quadrant, but the, the CEO of Shake Shack, Danny Myers, uses this when he's kind of evaluating his management team and his staff. And I think it's super powerful, but like as a mindset exercise for us, um, but you know, I can't resist a matrix. So basically this matrix is called like performance quadrants and it looks at it classifies people based on your willingness and based on your ability, right? Um, I think we all know like the most talented person isn't always the most successful person because it depends on how hard you're willing to work. So in our upper right corner, we have people who are able, right? They have the capability, they can, and also they will do the work. They are willing to perform, right? And these are our high performers, right? Are you a can and a will person is the question. Um, then in the upper left, we have people who, who aren't capable because they don't know the answers yet, but they are willing to do the work, right? And um, that's someone who's untrained, 
but they'll get there. And, you know, we have the training to help you here. Um, so you're, you're in the right spot. Um, on the lower right, we have people who are very capable, but maybe not necessarily willing to do the work or put in the time. And we would say that person's kind of unmotivated. They're, they, they're probably living in the victim space, right? Um, they're, they're just unwilling to see that like where there is a way, will, there is a way, right? Um, and then in the lower left corner, you know, if you're not capable and you're not willing to put in the work, um, you, you really don't belong here. And you, you, we don't really let people like that on our team. That's not part of our culture. So, um, I think the, does this make sense? Any questions? No. Okay. So the question is, which one are you? And you'll see, I didn't even bother putting can't and won't on the screen because that's not us, right? If you can't and you won't, you don't belong here. We're, we're a culture of excellence and a, a spot for high performers and people who want to be like an elite level performer. So the question is, which one are you and who do you want to be, right? Um, and I just thought this was really interesting about how you interact with this type of person as well, right? Someone who can't but will is um, someone, like I said, who's untrained. They need coaching. They need mentorship. They need onboarding. They need to come to our training classes. You know, someone who can and will, it's like, okay, how can we help you? We're going to support you. We're going to praise you. We're going to stay out of your way. Um, and we're going to celebrate you, right? And then can but won't. It's like, how do we help you guys, right? We know you can do it, but you're stuck for some reason. Like, how can we help you get unstuck? We can try to help really at the end of the day, like you have to decide, right? The won't factor is the willingness. And that goes back to what our coach just said, right? He knows plenty of people, people who are capable, but not a lot of people who are willing to do the work. So if you're stuck there, figure out what you need to do for yourself to get out of there, right? Questions? We want to help you too. So if you are stuck and you don't know what to do, come talk, talk to us and we'll try to figure out how to help you guys get unstuck. Okay. All right. We're going to switch gears a little bit and I'm going to show you how to log into bfsarconnect.com and look at your transaction history. So the reason we're doing this is because assessing where you are is a really important part of business planning. Um, you need to understand like where you currently stand in your business to figure out, you know, what's working, what isn't working, what do I want to try? What do I need to go back to, et cetera, et cetera. Like we can't figure out where we want to go if we don't figure out where we're, we're starting from, right? So um, in business planning, like no matter probably who you do business planning with or how you do it, you're always going to take a look at your current year and then also probably look backward to see what's worked in the past. So you guys know, I love the transaction audit where you pull your tr back transactions and then you go through and you identify the source. It's very specifically, right? You don't just say, oh, that was sphere. It's like, no, no, no. This was my son's baseball team or like middle school carpool or whatever. And just really, really look at like the source of the business. Um, I call that a transaction audit. You guys have heard it from me before. Ninja calls it real estate genealogy, which I think is good because it's like the fruit of the tree that brings you all these other transactions. Um, anyway, I digress. I'm going to show you here how to pull your transactions um, in BFSIR Connect. Obviously, we can do this for you, but we'd rather you guys be able to do it for yourself at any point in time. So here's a video. And don't worry, I'm going to share this afterwards. so You don't have to like remember how to do this. We'll share the video and post it where you can access it. But just so you can see how simple it is. One more little warning before we get started here. So we're going to log in and you can look at your transaction history. And then the second part of the video is downloading it to your computer and opening up an Excel spreadsheet. If you're not like super excel -y, that's fine. You can still go in and look and make your own list. So don't get overwhelmed by that. Questions? In history in BFSIR Connect. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that. The website where you can log in and see your production history, some of your marketing reports is bfsirconnect.com. Of course, if you can't remember that, you can always go to BF Office. There's a blue square for it and it would click you through. So when you click on that, it will take you to your login page and you would log in right here. If you can't remember your password, it's going to be your Brick Freeman email and then the same password you use to log in to your email. If you can't remember it, just you forgot password and reset. So you log in. I'm going to click over here into a dummy agent account because my account looks a little different as an administrator. But this is what you guys should see when you log in as an agent. Your name will be up here 
and you'll be in your dashboard and you can see um, this is where you would get your marketing reports. But what we're talking about today is your transaction history. And so you're going to go down here, just click agent production right here. And you will see that it, the default is to show you what you've produced so far, you know, this year, 20, all of 2023. So you can kind of go back through, you can see this agent had these deals in 2023. If you wanted to go back in time and pull all of your transactions, then you just go back. Now I will tell you, we did not transition to this system until August of 2020. So transactions before August 2020 won't be in here. So my recommendation is to go back and pull your prior two years from January of 2021 through 2023. And you can generate that report. It's going to show you everything you've done. And what you will do is, you know, it shows you all of your deals and all this good data about the deals. You will click here, you scroll to the bottom and download as a CSV. And then when you find your downloads in your computer, um, you go to your downloads and find where that saves and it will open up for you. So I downloaded this into an Excel file. So this is all the raw data that we were just looking at. Um, but one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight because this is a little bit hard to look at. I'm just going to highlight all of the columns and all of the content not going to highlight this at the bottom because we're going to show you a trick there. But what we're going to do now is format this as a table and we just can choose what we want it to look like. Obviously we'll pick blue because we're Briggs Freeman. We'll say, okay. And this is now a really nice table that you guys can use to um, sort your data. And I'm going to go through and delete all of this data here. This is the cumulative numbers. And what I'm going to do in every blank, I'm going to click this sum tab because that's going to add up all of those numbers. And then this is, you know, the gross commission. It will sum it up for me. Sales volume. So the sum of everything in that column. Gross. You know, and then agent net. Agent. These may not be meaningful numbers to you, and you can always delete whatever column is not meaningful to you, but that will help you. And then what you can do is you can say, look, I just want to see how I did this year. When you click in this drop down, you can unclick everything and click 2023, and it's only going to show you what you saw in 2023. You know, whether you had buyers or listings, you say, what if you said, I just want to know what buyers I had in 2023. There you go. And it doesn't have the client name for you if you're doing business planning, but it does have the address. So you can kind of go back through your records or into your rechat and see what you had. So now you have a great report of all your transactions and we encourage you to go through and use this when you're doing kind of a transaction audit to see how you did. I hope this makes sense. If you have questions, please reach out to your manager or to me. Thanks so much. Okie dokie. Okay. Hopefully that was helpful and not confusing. It just shows you guys how to log in and there's lots of good information in there, but specifically how to pull your transaction history. So one of the reasons that we do that, or maybe you don't need to log in because you keep a Ninja tracker spreadsheet or you keep a spreadsheet of all your deals, which is awesome. Um, I recommend once you create that spreadsheet is to go through and like identify the source. Like I said, do your genealogy or your transact and not just say sphere or friend, but specifically like, so that you know specifically where your deals are coming from. I, I did that exercise once with an agent who was like, oh, all my deals come from my friends. And when I was like, don't really go through, she realized that all of her business came only from her law school friends, which was very interesting to her. So, okay. So the document that you're looking at right now is called our at a glance. And um, this is a document, I'm going to share it after this class, but once you go through and you pull that history, you can fill this out And what you're really doing is you're just taking a little bit of time to spend in your business and really look at the numbers, right? How many listings did I close? How many buyers? How many transactions total? What was my GCI? What was my average GCI, right? If you figure out what your GCI was and how many deals you did, you can figure out your average GCI. Um, you know, and then as you fill these out and go through, you can kind of see, it may point out to you like, man, I 
did no referrals this year. And in the past I have, so what did I stop doing? Or I've gotten lots of referrals because I started going to networking events and that's something I want to keep doing because it's making me money or it's just going to help by going through and looking at these numbers, it's going to help you think a little bit more specifically about your business and how you're spending your time. So, um, it's going to be very telling just the act of going through and filling out a pa piece of paper and putting in numbers is actually going to be a lot more important than just putting numbers on paper. It's going to get you in touch with your business. I don't think that this would take you longer than 30 minutes to do. Um, I'll be curious to hear feedback from you guys that, that actually, if it actually takes that long or longer, but I think this is something super valuable and super important. And if you can have done this before you come to business planning, that would be awesome. If you can't, don't worry about it, but I highly, highly, highly recommend that you do this. Um, it would be ideal. And again, we're going to send it out. Does anyone have questions about this? No, pretty straightforward. Okay. So now what we're going to do is something called a self check. It might be a little bit tedious, but I think it's going to be important. Hopefully you have a piece of paper or can write notes in your phone or something of things that just how is your reaction to these questions, right? We're going to ask you questions and then you're going to say, am I a yes to that? Am I a no to that? Is this something where I can improve? And just, it's just to kind of jog your memory about things you could or should be doing. We're not saying that for you to be successful, every one of these has to be a yes. Everyone's different. Everyone's business is different, but these are things in general that we know make people successful if they're doing them. So you need to gut check what's working for you. What are you not doing? You know, we're putting ideas out there so that you can assess whether this is something that you think would be helpful in your business. So here we go. I'm going to go pretty quick, um, but just take notes. And again, we'll send all of these questions out so you could go through and like do the checklist yourself by hand. But um, we wanted to do it while we were all together. So here we go. Okay. Are you giving your business the passion, commitment, and high energy that you and your clients deserve? Yes, no, area for improvement. Are you investing in sending client appreciation gifts? Do you have a written business and marketing plan for your business? Do you have at least a six month marketing calendar with your plans for database touch points? Are you willing to take overpriced listings just because you need business? Nope. <laughs> Good answer. Are you communicating <laughs> via handwritten letters with your past clients in Sphere? Nope. Are you maximizing the use of BF Engage campaigns to reach out to your email database every month? Yes. Are you maximizing the use of BF Engage market reports to provide monthly reports to past and current clients? That should be market move. Sorry, guys. Um, have you spent any time maintaining or reviewing your database in the past 30 days? Are you initiating real estate reviews for at least 10 people per month? And are you posting on your social media accounts at least three times a week? Have you updated your professional headshot within the past two years? I had to check myself on that one. I think the answer is a no. Oops. Are you taking advantage of BF Engage to manage your database? Do you have a system for proactively reaching out to all your active buyers and sellers every week? Are you asking your existing clients if they know anyone looking to buy or sell within the next six months? And do you have a regular system for asking clients and friends for outgoing referrals? Have you received any incoming referrals from another agent in another market in the past 12 months? Have you placed an outgoing referral? Do you have an accountability partner to meet with at least once a month? Do you watch the Monday morning meetings to stay current on company and industry information? Do you attend in-person office huddles and meetings to stay current on the market and connected with peers? And are you spending time in the office each week to network and stay engaged in business? Okay. Do you go to broker open tours at least three out of every four weeks for, for knowledge of current market inventory? Do you work with an accountant or a financial planner to maximize your financial picture with respect to your business? Do you host at least one client event each year to see clients face-to-face -face and help them meet people in the community? Do you ask someone from your database out to lunch at least once a month to ask for referrals? 
Are you consistently asking your clients for referrals through testimonial tree? Have you enrolled your buyers in a real scout? Do you have a professional listing presentation and process that is immediately available and ready to use? Are you knowledgeable about the mortgage market and about today's relevant mortgage products? Are you scheduling update calls with sellers using seller reports to view online traffic and marketing e efforts? Are you maximizing your listing exposure by marketing them in Wall Street Journal, Reside, Digitally, et cetera? And are you having monthly discussions with sellers about price adjustments to their listings? Okay, last page. Are you familiar with BF Engage listing marketing templates and the agent network eblast feature? If not, it's awesome. Are you making use of the BFSAR custom cloud CMA template for real estate reviews and listing presentations? Is your bio up to date? And do you have an agent bio page to include in your bio packet and listing presentations? Honestly, is your data is your database as robust as it could be? Do you make regular use of thank you notes for referrals or people who help you out or do something kind? Do you always have at least five business cards on you? I am guilty of this really bad. Do you take advantage of weekly company trainings? After each client presentation, do you ask yourself, how could you have done that better? Are you able to articulate the value provided by Sotheby's International Realty to your clients? Are you top of mind to your sphere as the go-to person for things real estate or homeownership related? And are you at the point in your business where you should be delegating to a transaction coordinator? So that was a lot. Um, lots of questions. I'm getting, I got a message that says that this was kind of stressful and it made the agent feel bad. And I don't want that to be the case. Like I said, no one is a yes to all of these things. That's impossible. The idea is to like, help you get ideas of things that, oh, I should be doing that, or I'm good here, whatever it is, right? This is not intended to make you feel overwhelmed. And we're going to put, post the recording and anything that we reference, like the 23 at a glance or the self-check, like we'll also include just a document. So you could print it out and just like work on the document. But yes, good questions. Okay. All right. Um, and as I'm reading the agent comments, be kind to yourself. This is not meant to like make you feel bad. This is to stir up ideas and think, figure out the things you want to pick and focus on. No one can do all of these things. Okay. So don't, don't be stressed. Shut up. And we're going to watch a video from my good friend, wow. Simon Sinek, who you guys know, I love and adore. So this is Simon Sinek. He wrote, he wrote, he did the very famous Ted talk starts with why, which if you haven't watched is a must watch. Um, and he has his most recent book, or maybe it's his most recent book is called the infinite game. And it's all about um, the way we should be thinking infinitely versus trying to like beat, beat someone or being competitive with someone else. So I'm going to show you guys this video. I also spoke at a leadership summit for Apple. Now at the Microsoft summit, I would say 70% of the executives, and this was under the Steve Ballmer days, I would say about 70% of the executives spent about 70% of their presentations talking about how to beat Apple. At the Apple summit, 100% of the executives spent 100% of their presentations talking about how to help teachers teach and how to help students learn. One was obsessed with their competition. The other one was obsessed with where they're going. So at the end of my presentation at Microsoft, they gave me a gift. They gave me the new Zoom, which was the competitor to the iPod touch when it was a thing, right? And I have to tell you, this piece of technology was spectacular. It was beautiful. The user interface was incredible. The design was amazing. It was intuitive. It was one of the most beautiful, elegant pieces of technology I'd ever seen, right? Now, they, it didn't work with iTunes, which is an entirely different problem. I couldn't use it. But that's something else. I'm sitting in the back of a taxi with a senior Apple executive, sort of employee number 12 kind of guy, and I decide to stir the pot. And I turn to him, I say, you know, I spoke at a Microsoft summit and they gave me their new Zoom. And I have to tell you, it is so much better than your iPod touch. And he turned to me and said, I have no doubt. Conversation over. Uh, 
which is the infinite player isn't playing to be number one every day with every product. They're playing to outlast the competition. If I had said to Microsoft, oh, I've got the new iPod Touch, it's so much better than your new Zoom, they would have said, can we see it? What does it do? How, we have to see it. Because one is obsessed with their competition. The other is obsessed with why they do what they do. The other is obsessed with where they're going. And the reason Apple frustrates their competition is because secretly, they're not even competing against them. They're competing against themselves. And they understand that sometimes you're a little bit ahead, and sometimes you're a little bit behind. And sometimes your product is better, and sometimes you're not. But if you wake up every single morning and compete against yourself, how do I make our products better than they were yesterday? How do I take care of our customers better than we did yesterday? How do we advance our cause more efficiently, more productively than we did yesterday? How do we find new solutions to advance our calling, our cause, our purpose, our belief, our why every single day? What you'll find is over time, you will probably be ahead more often. Those who play the infinite game understand it's not about the battle, it's about the war. And they don't play to win every day. And they frustrate their competition until their competition drops out of the game. Every single bankruptcy, almost every merger and acquisition is basically a company saying we no longer have the will or the resources to continue to play and we have no choice to either drop out of the game or, or merge our resources with another player so that we can stay in the game. That's what that is. And if you think about the number of bankruptcies and mergers and acquisitions, it's kind of proof that most companies don't even know the game they're in. You want to be a great leader, start with empathy. You want to be a great leader, change your perspective and play the game you're actually playing. Okay. I love that. I mean, I think the infinite mindset is a winner's mindset, right? Um, and that's something that's, you know, hard for us. We definitely pay attention to what the people around us are doing and the competition is doing. And it's really not about that, right? It's about you showing up as your best self um, and figuring out what do you need to do to be better than you were yesterday, right? And we're not gonna be better every day, but we're gonna try. So one more video. Thank you guys for bearing with me on the videos. And thank you also for hanging with me on the sports analogies. This guy, I don't know how many of you know who he is. Giannis Antetokounmpo, he plays for the Bucks. He's awesome. He gives great, uh, he gives great press con conferences. He always starts with like a dad joke. He's got a really good attitude. Um, and this is a, his response this is a press conference and the whole press conference is really long, but I pulled out the clip where he is, um, talking about, you know, winning sometimes and losing sometimes he's an amazing player. Um, kind of brought the bucks out of nowhere. I would say maybe that's not fair, but he, um, they won the championship in 2021. And then he gets asked this question by a reporter and it made him really mad, but it's a good response. So here we go. This is a short clip. Get it to play. Um, Michael Jordan played 15 years, won six championship. The other nine years was a failure. That's what you're telling me. I'm asking you a question, yes or no? Okay, exactly. So why are you asking that question? It's a wrong question. There's no failure in sports. You know, there's good days, bad days. Some days, some days you are able to uh, be successful. Some days you're not. Some days it's your turn. Some days it's not your turn. And that's what sports is about. You don't always win. Some other other people's gonna win. And this year somebody else is gonna win. Similar as that, gonna come back next year. Try to be better. Try to build good habits. Try to uh, play better. Not have a ten day stretch with uh, play bad basketball. You know, and hopefully we can win a championship. So 50 years from 1971 to 2021 that we didn't win a championship, it was 50 years of failures. No, it was not. It was steps to it, you know, and we, we were able to win one. Hopefully we can win another one. Uh, so I love that. I think it's like the perfect living analogy of what Simon Sinek is talking about, right? Like we have to play an infinite game. Like we're not always going to be ahead. We're not always going to be behind. It, we're just staying in the game, doing the best we can, trying to get better and knowing that like the work we're putting in now has got to just be cumulative going forward. So um, I I love that. And I love him. He's a great follow. My nephews follow him too. And whenever I see that they've liked something that he posted on Instagram, it makes me happy because it's like good content and not garbage content. At least they're getting something good in their brain from social media. Um, okay. Okay. 
So we've been here for almost 45 minutes. The question is really like, what now, right? Why did we do this? Um, we want you to put a business planning session into your calendar, right? The Sotheby's one, one of ours, maybe both. If you don't want to do these, do your own, fine, whatever. However you do it, the managers want to sit down with you and know what your, your plan is and what your goals are so that they can help support you and hold you accountable. Um, and Sherry and Catherine want to sit down with you if you have a plan and a budget and you know your business so that they can help you lay out a plan for yourself and keep yourself accountable. So put the session on your calendar. Think about what it is that you hope to achieve next year, right? Revisit the self-check to see what's working and where you want to improve. Again, you don't have to answer yes to all of them. That's not what we're asking. Um, pull your transaction history and take a look at it, right? Do your little audit and then prepare your 2023 at a glance so that you've spent some time like in your business before you go into the business planning session to set goals and think about what you want to keep doing, what you want to do differently. Does anyone have questions? This is all we got. Oh, Clay asked, what was the question that, Gian that Giannis got asked? And they asked him if he thought, uh, if they thought this year was a failure. And so he said, I think he said, I think you're asking the wrong question. Um, you couldn't hear it, but it's a good question. Okay. So again, here's the slide so that obviously we're hoping you attend one of these sessions. Like I said, I hope a hundred of you attend. We have 63 of you here. Um, we didn't lose anyone. So that's good. You've hung in here to the end. Does anyone have questions? Do we want to have a conversation? Do you want to unmute? Again, you'll get a follow-up email for me with the stuff we've talked about. I'll give you a survey too. So you can tell me what I can do better here next time. Um, anyone have thoughts, comments? Sarcastic remarks. I'm looking over there because that's where my video of all of you guys is. No? Quiet. Okay. This was helpful. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for coming. I'll, I'll leave with my like ugly little guys that I show you guys every year, but I think it's so perfect. You know, there's two people. Aren't you afraid of what 2024 might be like? Everything's so messed up, which I think again is even more true this year than it was last year. And this guy says, you know, I think it's going to bring flowers. And this is, he says, why? And he's like, because I'm planting flowers, right? You, we can only control the things that are within of our control. So that's what we need to focus on. So that's all I got. Thank you guys for coming. We'll send out an email with the links and the classes and the attachments and all the things. Um, I'm grateful to you guys for being here. I'm grateful to the managers for helping put this together and executing business planning and, um, Hopefully all you guys show up and bring a friend so we can hit our goal at least of 100 agents. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you.